Hello everyone and welcome to the Deeply Renegade podcast. My name is Molly, also known as the Deeply Renegade, and I'd like to welcome you guys to episode 242. Today is Saturday, um, August 18th, 2018, and I'm glad you could join me today. It is um, thunderstorming outside, um, and I think it's going to be a quick episode this week. Um, but, I don't know, who knows? <laughs> This is my supposition. Um, I really didn't need to carry very much upstairs, so. Um, And I also neglected to turn on the air conditioning, so it was 85. So I'm not sure whether or not the fans with the lights will (laughs) make this shirt just because it's a little bit toasty. So we shall see. It's definitely later than usual. Dinner has been consumed, so shouldn't be too too crazy. But all right, let's figure my head and pull stuff out. Uh, everything was fitting. Well, it's not quite really. It's not properly all fitting in my middle bag. I did cram it all in, but then it's just sort of <laughs> overflowing too. So, the first thing I have on my needles is my um, mini dress. So this is a Caddy Leadbetter pattern, um, and I took the class with her mom, and so that's why I had the pattern, because I ended up buying her mom's book which was Mother Daughter Knits, so both of them contributed to the book. Um, The pattern is for individual sale now on Ravelry, if you are sort of inspired. But this is how far I am, so I'm not following the pattern. Um, I started at the bottom of the waist stripe, and then there was some, like, interpretive stuff, but I think we're... My waist is here. And my arms are supposed to, yeah, my arms are supposed to be a little bit higher. So, so this is about where we are. So, maybe it would be easier to show you guys what it looks like. I don't know if I've shown, like, what would it be? So, um, pattern is mini dress. It is supposed to be knit out of a worsted weight um, yarn, but I'm knitting it out of a DK to sport linen yarn, but I am getting the right gauge. So it's a little bit of a challenge hitting that, Um, but such is life. So what I've done to try to make this work with what what resources I have available is um, I have actually made the waist stripe an inch larger. Um, so that I end up using, so that I have more yarn available um, for making it as long as possible. Because I'm probably going to be limited by how much of my navy blue I have. So in this photo, the light gray I've turned to navy blue, and the black I have turned to bright turquoise, but then I've kept the light color the same. So. This is probably sort of a creamy white, and I have a silvery color instead. So, this is what it's going to look like, and I'm going to wear it with leggings. And hopefully it's it's going to be something that's like not too hot, because it would have been too hot. Excuse me, it would have been too hot with it being worsted wool. There was just no way. So hopefully this is going to make this a much more wearable thing. Um, I bought the yarn for a different pattern, which is why I'm trying to make it all work. Um, And it appears that this time I'm actually getting gauge. So I'm using um, Fiber Natura um, flax. And I got this for a screaming deal at House of Yarn. um, Because it was like their SSK discount. So all in, it was $35 for the yarn. And I already own the book, so... Oh, don't zip over things. So, that's the story there. The problem is that it is intarsia. (laughs) 
so um, my my yarn does fairly frequently become a dreadful tangle um, and you have to stop every so often and untangle things because the I'm only using one ball of navy blue but I have both of my balls of of bright teal and silver attached so they're all getting used all at once so this is where I am right now I sort of like to showcase more of the teal how can I do that there we go so not too too crazy and I will bring in a close-up um, so I was at knit night last night and someone had complimented me actually on my intarsia skills so um, if you pull, I think you can see a little bit better, maybe some of the messiness of the join. So hopefully I'm not tight on this guy, because it will expose the awkwardness of the intarsia. Whatever. Um, but basically, um, uh, based on how many different stripes there are, I do have the right amount of stuff so I will probably um, what would it be and you you can you can totally see through this so there will definitely be something worn underneath this top because it is much more see-through than the pattern intended but hopefully everything ends up working out pretty good um, the way this is sort of knitting up like I have my V's and then I have like fairly significant bars in between my V's, which I find to be interesting. <laughs> but it doesn't look too, too crazy. Um, I probably need to take a few photos of this and post this in the stock in it zombies spring into summer cal because it's still summer. <laughs> so at the very least I will have cast another thing on for that because I ended up, I believe I ended up counting my um, still like tunic also for that too so just sort of stocking up my sweaters with leggings <laughs> supply and it appears to be going so much better now um, when I did the gauge swatch I got the same gauge with the sixes and the fives um, and then I went with the fives and then I was not getting the right gauge anymore once I sort of settled into the project I am getting the right gauge on the sixes so that's good um, I am a pretty I am a pretty loose knitter though and it's very strange working with uh, working with this yarn just because um, like it's one thing when you're like knitting with yarn and like you're just getting the gauge you're getting because that is as close together as the stitches will be, but it's very different working with something where you're manipulating the gauge a bit. So, um, it's not what I find interesting, like obviously this doesn't, the, like I, I feel like I could give myself a really good face scrubbing with this fabric. <laughs> It is uh, not not soft at all, but it's not unpleasant to work with either. Cause like I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure I picked this up after last week. Like I think my needles were clear last week's podcast, so I did manage to get a good deal of sweater knit. But yeah, no, it's not it's not the the friendliest feeling yarn ever. So whatever. Um, I am in the process of making room for the arms now. I thought the the way it asked me to do that was a little bit strange, but whatever. Such is life. <laughs> um, and the sleeve will eventually um, also be this nice little bright teal. So I'm excited about bringing in a little bit more of that into the sweater. So this is um, part of the first quarter um, and this is the size so this is how much of my 50 gram ball I have left now and this is sort of how big the 50 gram ball is with nothing there. So 
Um, I'm wondering if some things are a little bit friendlier as far as working with it's concerned, because I did end up winding it by hand twice before I started. Um, and I don't think I'd want to center pull these because they're sort of loosey-goosey. Um, if that... <laughs> Not, not as bad as like just immediately unraveling, but definitely the case where you're carefully trying to figure out what things are connected and tangled and the whole bit. So this is this has been pretty good project so far, and now I'm dropping stitches, which is unfortunate. Hopefully that wasn't too terrible. So. Definitely slick for sure, but I'm fine with the metal needles, so glad this is finally back on track. Um, and I was also amused because my fat scroll bag totally matches the project. Now, also worth a giggle is um, how similar my other project is. <laughs> so, um, I cast on for On the Spice Market, which is a Melanie Berg pattern. I am knitting it out of a Miss Babs gradient in the, I think they're toasty toes. And um, the other base I'm using is like Hotshot Sock. Um, and so that, so the teal is Sea Siren and it's Wild Iris. And then my gradient into the Beachcomber set, which has all sorts of amusing names. <laughs> Unfortunately, all of those amusing names are out of reach. So I'll I'll tell I'll tell them whenever some convenient time. If you want the if you want the kit, the kit is called Beachcomber. I remember that. But I was so this darkest color is Welk, and that's the only one I remember because Welk. <laughs> so this is how it's coming together so far. Um, I cast this on last night after I got home from knitting, so um, I might have even recast it on this morning because I um, disagreed with one of my design choices. <laughs> um, and this is basically the shape it's going to turn out to be. So I also find that to be amusing too. So it's sort of that long, curved, boomerang sort of thing, which I think looks really, really cute. Um, so what I have here are a pair of markers. Um, so I um, don't need the markers all the time, I just need them for like setup purposes. Mm, excuse me. Um, but they're, they're pretty handy. So I have one removable one and one fixed one just so that I can attach them to my project. Um, so then whenever I need the markers, I can pull them off, chunk them in, and then go from there. But I am, I'm enjoying how it's turning out so far. Um, I'm excited um, to see this grow. Most of this was knit during um, a board game. We were playing a game called Power Grid, which didn't end up requiring an awful lot of strategy on my part. <laughs> Mostly I was just announcing to everyone like, look, I've reached a new section, so. Yeah, I am almost, almost done with this color. Um, and then I have two more that I'm going to incorporate. It appears that the pattern was originally designed for this specific, or for the the grading kit that I have. Um, they were pretty, um, what was it? It, it was pretty sizable um, skeins, or pretty sizable mini skeins, so it was the case where I think it was six colors, um, but then each color, um, but then everything added up to be about two skeins. So it was, um, I 
Math is totally escaping me right now. <laughs> so it was bigger than what I was used to seeing for many scenes. That is what I would like to to add. So they were like 33 grand mini skeins instead of like 25 grand mini skeins. I'm not sure what we would, how much extra um, I could have with this. Um, what is maybe a little bit crazy making about the pattern is that um, there doesn't really seem to be a good way of carrying up or maybe with the contrast of my colors it doesn't seem to make sense. Um, I try. I started one and then decided that it was effectively like leaving a string basically on the outside and decided to let that be. So I'm gonna have oodles of ends when it comes to it. But it is comforting to know that I am knitting it out of the um, suggested yarn. <laughs> Like, I'm not going off the rails or anything. <laughs> so, that is good to know. And it's been a pretty enjoyable knit today. So, the sweater didn't get nearly as much love um, <laughs> today as it um, has earlier this week. But it has gotten a pretty good amount of love, too. I'm trying to think about if I had done anything that resulted in more knitting time than usual, and nothing is coming to me right now. It's just been a normal week. So, now that I have knit a row on camera, ooh, whistling wind. <laughs> Should be fun. So, um,. This is my main color, and then I have um, six other skeins hanging out in here, which I am trying to rejigger the bag to show you guys all at once. We'll see how that goes. Eh. So. I have these two lighter colors left to knit, um, and it has been, here we go, really enjoyable to knit so far. So I've been enjoying it. If I put them in order, it would be more like this. Well, I'll show you. So it is um, all sorts of like nice sandy colors. This is another SSK 2017 purchase, so using it up. And it doesn't, it still looks pretty good on the wrong side, but it definitely looks very nice on the right side. And um, I was afraid that the darker parts of the teal were going to look more black, but I think I think we're good. It's mostly just coming off as a nice bright teal with slightly darker bits. Um, and what I also really like about the yarn so far is that it is um, they they're all semi solid. So I really sort of I really like the the depth of color that I'm getting with this too. So that's making me happy as well working on it. So still quite a lot of shawl to go because it, it's effectively three skeins of yarn. Um, but I think that this will look really nice too. So so far, so on the spice market, Melanie Berg, um, quite the tangle of yarn coming out of this bag, but such is life. Um, whatever, I'm a master tangler, so <laughs> I'm, I, I have to be one with the tangle. <laughs> so those are my projects right now, um, and I think those will keep me happy for quite some time. Um, I just have to laugh a little bit when I end up clearing my needles totally, and then I just have 
whatever, two new projects. <laughs> The odds of finishing them in nine days, zilch. Um, which brings me to the one thing that I will be finishing for Stash Dash. Which is also like a fun little decision too. So I don't remember whether or not I had started spinning this um, last week or if I had started if I had shown you guys, but I do have two bobbins of completed singles. So this is the Hip Strings um, Upland Cotton Sliver. Um, it was carded, but it, it seemed like it was top. It didn't seem, it didn't seem very carded to me. Um, and I had, um, there was a unicorn color because apparently <laughs> Jill likes her unicorns. <laughs> um, and then the other one was, um, it was unicorn tie-dye. And then this one that you mostly see here is um, blueberry crumble. So the unicorn tie-dye is this lighter stuff here, probably from about this point all the way here. And then the rest of it, was, or some of the bobbin is blueberry crumble, and some of the bobbin is unicorn tie-dye. So, um, I was, um, my dad ended up doing a surprise visit, um, my dad ended up doing a surprise visit, so I ended up, um, hanging out in the living room talking with him and spinning, and at some point I was like, oh, I have this great idea, I am going to, um, see if I have a third left of the unicorn tie-dye, which I did, um, and I set that aside, or basically broke it off so that I spun the rest of the third. And then I ended up taking my blueberry crumble and splitting that into one third and two thirds. Um, that one I just did mechanically. So <laughs> I had my length of fiber, I wound it across the floor so that I had three lengths and then broke it there. So then I did two thirds of unicorn tie dye and one third blueberry crumble. And then I spun my remaining third of blueberry crumble in this bobbin and the two thirds of the um, blueberry crumble on the other one. And now when I apply them, I will have a combo spin gradient where one third of the yarn is all blueberry crumble, then 50-50, and then part of the last third of the yarn will be entirely unicorn tie-dye. So I think that's going to be fun because I, um, what would it be? I really do actually, um, what would it be? For some reason, I just am really digging the unicorn tie-dye quite a lot. So I might have actually wanted to do it the other way. Um, for some reason, the blueberry crumble was much more of a solid dye. Um, and for some reason, some of the purples just come across sort of dull. At least to me. Um, but hand-dyed cotton, um, not terrible to spin with. I ended up looking it up. It's like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I did not, in fact, have a high enough ratio, but based on the curly cues that I'm getting in this, which hopefully will come out in the plying, yeah, it's sort of relaxing when I manipulate it. So, um, that I, I must have, I must have put enough twist into this. It'll be fine, but. So it, the suggestion was to have a pretty ludicrous ratio on the, um, on your reel in order to spin this, but I think, I think it's good enough. Um, and so I'll be applying this together and this will be my last dash dash yardage. And then whatever leftover I have, it'll be just fine because it'll be unicorn tie dye going back on itself. So. I'm really amused by the beauty of this little combo spin method, so excited to try it. Um, I think I saw Amy Florence, who got inspired by someone else, so it should be fun. And then I have no clue what I'm going to do with the yarn at all. <laughs> I was just curious about the cotton, so I got to share my recommendation because one of the, I'm, I'm all ready to ply on my Lendrum. 
sleazy Kate. So I hadn't yet started applying. I was wondering if I would have a chance, but after podcasting. <laughs> See, that's the problem, is that I think of the weekend as one unit at a time, and if the podcast is in the middle of the weekend, then I don't remember that I've talked about. <laughs> Slyness. That sounds like it's really coming down. I guess I'm glad that I didn't try recording outside. That's probably okay, because it was pretty muggy. Um, it's not normal to write in August. So, <laughs> our grass actually is green, so. <laughs> I bet all the neighbors hate this. <laughs> oh well. So, what that means is I'm probably going to have to figure out what to spin next. And I may end up choosing the spin along choice. Um, and honestly, I think I'm going to go for something pretty simple. Um, so, um, after Tour de Fleece, um, there was, like, some chitter-chatter in the mess group, and so, um, the current spin-along is the momentum spin-along, so after we've all had a fun time spinning our nest dashes, which I did do in a spin for Tour de Fleece, so no big deal. Um, it was like, let's keep spinning! I don't know, I don't have a problem with let's keep spinning, sort of like how I don't have a problem finishing the second sock. <laughs> like, there's plenty of fiber. <laughs> like, my... But I am down to, um, the last few spins in my bin so I can, in fact, hold them up all at once. So I have three remaining spins. Um... I have my Nitty in Color Screaming Jewel Tones. I have this nest, um, which reminds me of the beach, hardcore. And then there is the um, Hog Island, which I think needs to be a supported spindling project. So I'm thinking I want to do the nest. So this is um, some of my Nest Fiber Club. It is the Persephone colorway. It's Superwash Merino, Merino Silk. And it reminds me of the beach so much. <laughs> with the dark blues and the light blues and all the sand colors and I think we're going for a hat trick guys <laughs> like I think I think I just keep doing this <laughs> it's not a hat trick of hats it's a hat trick of teal, brown, blue. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I can't deny it. So, I'm gonna have to start this project. <laughs> and I think I'm gonna keep this one really simple. So I've been doing all these different structures and the whole thing, and I think what I want to do with this is spin it end to end, big, big, big stripes and chain ply it. I, I want to keep these colors pure. Um, and I haven't done a chain ply in quite some time. So, um, I'll have to figure out what, what ratio I want to hit. Um, but I am so, I'm so in love with this fiber. Like, it couldn't have been a part of my combo spin just because it needed to be its own separate project because it's just so pretty. Which, obviously, you can tell that I'm whatever. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> so, um, I'm really, I'm looking forward to this. Um, and then it may be the case, since I'm like so far ahead on my spin the bin, that I can start the Hog Island next as a supported spindling project. So I do want to learn how. Um, I've been carrying all the stuff around with me, so I think I need to bite the bullet and do that. So, I'm excited. 
but I'll put that there because I won't need it until I finish the common. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm excited that I'm, what would it be? At least a month ahead. I might be two months ahead pretty soon on the spin up and stuff. And I can't think of any, oops, it's this side with the crazy hair. <laughs> I can't think of anything that's going to interrupt me in the near term. I may just focus on getting through all of that. Um, I'm still not done pulling my top from the hackle. Um, I have it set up in the office, um, and for whatever reason I'm not finishing it. Whatever. It won't be a big deal. It's just that my desk in the office ended up being a way better place to clamp. Um, I have a half card table in this room, um, but it it was not it, it wasn't a good surface for for clamping. And I the counter isn't quite right. And maybe I could do the bookshelf, but that sounds pretty exciting too. <laughs> I might. Or the bookshelf may be fine for pulling it off, but the bookshelf would not be okay with, I think, attaching, because I don't think there's enough room. I do want something pretty sturdy, so the desk is sturdy enough. So that that's the only sort of, like, weird, um, non-staff-dashy project. Um, I'm not, I'm not getting any yardage for how much, uh, top I pull. <laughs> um, but that should, that should be really, really gorgeous. I don't know if it's the case where I need to start thinking about, um, dyeing the next batch of fiber, or if that next batch of fiber is what I decide to dye at yarn school. Um, I suppose I haven't talked very much about about yarn school, so I am going to yarn school in October. Um, it is mid, mid October. <laughs> Vacation schedule, like, what would it be? Alcohol has been bought. <laughs> I get the impression that it's a drinking party with a spinning problem. <laughs> Maybe it's fine. I probably need to appropriately pajama or something like that. So, um, there will be spinning and going to a farm and, um, dyeing with Adrian of Hello Yarn, and it all takes place in a, um, old elementary school in Harveyville, Kansas. I'm not entirely sure where Harveyville is, um, <laughs> I'm going to be driving up there with my friend. She's been going for like seven or eight years now, um, so, um, would it be? I, I figure it'll be fine. I, it, it, like, it's the spinning party, so I'm, I'm pretty happy. Um, so that's coming up, I guess in about two months, um, what would it be? In exactly two months, I, um, what would it be? My, my sister's getting hitched. Or nearly exactly two months, something like that. So, um, there may be some disruption in the podcast schedule um, due to all of the trips. Maybe not all of them, though, but whatever. Like, one more set of plane tickets left to buy. So, should be too, too crazy. We should just rip that band-aid off right away. <laughs> get, get good flights. So, I believe that that is everything and it has turned out to be a normal length episode despite the nonsense, so I can't predict these things. <laughs> I can, like, estimate, but for some reason I'm just no good. <laughs> whatever. So, um, there should be no problem with recording next week. Let me check the date. 
so that'll be the 25th or the 26th. Um, I'll probably be recording on the 2nd in September, so. Yes, me. Shouldn't be too, too, too crazy. If not, like, it's gonna be... <laughs> I have to laugh. Um, so the same auction that I auctioned off the pair of socks um, at, um, I ended up bidding on a um, lasagna dinner hosted by one of my friends from work with a bunch of my friends from work, and I was like, to to the instigator and organizer of the bidding, I was like, it's gonna be really hard to get all of us together at once, and let let it be known, like the action ended in April, and we still haven't had a weekend <laughs> where everyone can show up at the same time. <laughs> So it's it's very challenging to get that many couples corralled together, apparently. So yeah, whatever, it's probably going to be the first. So we'll go with that. Um, and I did um, give the socks to the um, to the winner of the auction. She was super duper excited and thought everything was really nice. So that was good. Um, I maybe I had more dinner time this week because it turned out that my battery suddenly died. It did explain why I stalled my car twice. <laughs> I think. <laughs> but, um, what was it? It turned out on Monday it decided it was done, done, done. Um, and then I called security to get their help and they couldn't get it started. And then um, I convinced someone to help me, or what was it? And by the fourth person, we, we did manage to get it started, but the second person who helped me was trying to help me push my car so we could push start it. Um, but it turned out that I didn't have like the key in the ignition so I couldn't actually turn the wheels, so there wasn't actually really enough room for me to maneuver to push start. <laughs> Life's well, exciting sometimes. Um, and then the third person who like stopped because they were watching the hilariousness of two people pushing a Miata <laughs> was like, wait, no, I don't have any jumper cables. And then the fourth person, one of my coworkers, is like, gotcha. <laughs> so he pulled up and then we jumped in and then it was all fine. <laughs> but interesting and then the next like we didn't end up buying a battery that night so then the next day I had my my jumper cables like industrial gate zero wire jumper cables um and I taught um a guy how to how to jump cars <laughs> and it's like don't worry about it like these are the things you need to know chunk and then got it going no problem and that night we ended up getting the battery so so, I might have done less things than I normally do um, after work, which may have resulted in more knitting time. We can theorize. <laughs> so, the jumper cables are still in the back of my car, um, but they probably don't need to be anymore. Like, I don't need to... There's so much of them. <laughs> Silliness, so... That was my excitement. So, I think that's everything for reels. <laughs> um, I hope you guys have a lovely week, and I look forward to talking to you guys next week. So, take care guys. Bye-bye.